Hi, this is Dr. Pan, the host of Tucson Math Doc channel on YouTube. Today we want to talk about a difference quotient. This is part one of three uh, series. Um, in this series, we want to do talk about a bird's eye view. What is difference quotient and how it fits in the grand scheme of things? Okay, so let me start by drawing an overview of where we are as far as calculus wise. So let me move this one up a little bit. Um, on the very bottom, of course, you start with arithmetic and you move it on to algebra, and then you have some geometry, and then you get on to the trig, uh, pre-calculus. That's what most students do by the time they got to calculus. Then you have the calculus 1, okay, calculus 2, calculus 3, and I'll say this is advanced calculus here. Okay, so advanced calculus, we have um, differential equations, for example. We have linear systems. Okay, we have some numerical analysis, so on and so forth. Okay, this is more for people who just basically wants to do calculus for living. Uh, calculus 3 is often referred to as in vector calculus. Okay, this is for physics and physicists and engineer. Um, this is a must to take. Calculus two, uh, we deal with a lot of sequence uh, submissions and convergence and so forth, so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of the probability and the statistics, okay, statistics, probability, uh, random process classes and goes over there. For example, the optics um, applied field has quite a bit of um, this branch here. Calculus 1 is the foundation for everything I listed above. Okay, so it's important that, that you have a good foundation in Calculus 1. And one of the most fundamental concepts that you encounter the first time when you start taking calculus I'm shading this area over here. This is where the difference quotient is. Okay, so this is in the grand scheme where it fits. Now let's talk about what this thing is and what it does. Calculus 1 deals a lot with derivatives. First derivative, second derivative of a function. All it says is a fancy way to say if I give in a function, Okay. What is the slope right at the certain points? As you recognize, now the slope changes depending on which point you're looking at. Okay. The reason we are so interested in finding the slope is that when we're doing a certain word problem or real life problem, we want to find out what the local minimum is or local maximum for profit, for example. Okay. For example, there's a local maximum here and local minimum here. In order to find all those points, we need the derivatives. For example, the first derivative give you where the local maximum and local minimum is. Second derivative give, where, give you where this um, fancy term called an inflection point is. That's when a curve moves concave up to concave down. So this point is my inflection point. And how to find this inflection point is second derivative. All this derivative is based on one key concept. That's what we're talking about, the difference quotient here. All difference quotient, really, it's just a fancy term for slope. Okay, let's see. Given a function look like this. If I want to find the slope over here, very crudely, what I can do is calculate rise over run, literally. Okay, but this is A, this is A plus, little change in A. Okay, so the rise is F of A plus delta X minus F of A. Okay, that's the rise. Uh, if I have over run, that's the delta X. This is exactly identical uh, formula we use as earlier as a slope. Okay, so difference quotient is really just about slope, which is a foundation for finding derivatives. Derivative is what all calculus one really cared about. Giving a function, can I find local minimum, local maximum, can I find the inflection point? And that's the foundation 
for calculus two, calculus three, and more advanced calculus. So indeed, it is a very important topic. Okay, later on, on part two, we'll talk about it. Uh, what, how to calculate difference quotient. All right. Hope this helps. Have a confident day.